Today I'm going to tell you the story of a woodcutter. The woodcutter was a rather poor man. He'd had a hard life together with his wife, but somehow they had survived. Now one day again, the woodcutter had brought a large amount of wood into town and delivered it for a very rich man. He stood inside the gates and he was looking around himself. Everything was so beautifully carved. Everything was done so well. The woodcutter thought to himself, and if I work for a lifetime, I can never become this rich. Then he was called into the rooms where the master was sitting on a chair, sipping his tea and smoking a pipe. He threw a coin at him and asked, is that enough? Well, it was more than enough and the woodcutter thanked him greatly. Then he was escorted back downstairs to the main gates. He asked the servant, tell me, how has your master come to all these fortunes? Ma, don't know. He doesn't do much. He sits in his room, smokes his pipe, sips his tea, and oh yes, he waits for the woman to spin the golden thread of his destiny for him. That's what he does. Not much, is it? Well, to the woodcutter, it was more than he needed to know. He decided to do the same. So when that night he got home and his wife greeted him with a big smile for all the wood was gone, she asked, and how was it? Did you buy some delicious food for us? No, I did not, he exclaimed. And he explained to her that he had bought tea, a pipe, and that he was now going to sit in his comfortable chair and wait for the good woman to come into his life to spin the golden thread of his destiny. His wife did not know whether she was to believe her ears. Has he gone mad? Has he worked too much in his life? But her husband did what he had said. Deep in thought, she went back into the kitchen. Outside, she could see their donkey, which was grazing on the front yard. A neighbour passed by. He was a rather greedy man. He sort of scratched his beard and thought, hmm, they don't need the donkey right now, might as well use it. And he took the donkey along to the peat pit where he dug out big squares and lumps of pit. He filled them into sacks, one sack after another, and he loaded them on to the donkey. He was so greedy that he wanted yet another sack. And when he dug into the pit, there was something rock hard. He thought to himself, what's that? He dug a bit deeper, and yes, he found a huge metal chest. He opened it, and yes again, it was filled with golden coins. The man thought lightning had struck him. He emptied all the sacks of peat again, and he filled them all up with gold and loaded them onto the donkey. But there was still more gold to be had, and in his fear that he might miss out, he went back down into the hole where the chest was lying. And he tried to fill up even more. Just then, the ground underneath him broke open. And the chest, including the greedy man, with the peat toppling on top of him, fell down deep, deep into the ground. The donkey stood there and waited. It was heavily loaded up with lots of sacks full of gold. And when nobody came, it sort of got hungry and it walked back home. Having arrived there, it gave three loud E-R's. The woman knew that their donkey had come back. She didn't know where from, but she thought, oh my goodness me, my husband, he's forgotten to put the donkey into the stable. So she led it there. She was just going to empty all the sacks which she thought were filled with peat when a coin of gold rolled towards her. She 
she couldn't believe her luck. The sacks were filled with gold. She rushed inside to call her husband. Husband, you've got to come. Husband. I can't. I've got to sit here, smoke my pipe and drink my tea and wait for the woman to spin my thread of my good fortune and destiny. Husband, you have to come now. Something amazing has happened. It took a while for the husband to move. But when he moved and he saw all the gold, he was very, very pleased, of course. Husband, where has this come from? Where did you get this from? Or where it's come from, I don't know. And I certainly didn't come home with it. But you know, that's what happens when you sit and you wait and you sip your tea, you smoke your pipe, and then eventually your good fortune will come to you. May just as much good fortune come to all of you over the Christmas season and, of course, in 2012.